continue on here with my good friend Brian Miller. Um, he has been one of our most frequent visitors to the stage over the last 11 years. Um, I wonder, Brian, if you were even one of the first performers here. Um, we were just chatting here thinking about when we actually first started concerts. Uh, it was back in January of 2010 was the first official concert we had here. There were a couple of small events that had happened before that, but our first official concert was a band uh, from Scotland. Brian was probably in attendance at that gig, I oh, think, that night. Was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, humble beginnings, for sure. I remember during that week kind of going, oh my God, what are we doing? Uh, hanging lights and and uh, hanging speakers and stuff like that and, and actually getting ready for what at the time we never know never knew what the journey would would turn out to be um and that we would still be here 11 years later doing it but uh it was a bit of a leap of faith at that time you brian have been have been a uh, a touring artist all over the us and 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 uh, you've you've actually gone to ireland touring as well yeah tell us a little bit about that well yeah i mean it's an interesting thing to talk about this venue as somebody who who has both played here with bands that are from out of town in that the other the other people in the band are from out of town and but then i also live just down the street yeah. um but i could just say like from the perspective of i mean i do sort of know the perspective that you have if you're a band that's traveling around the united states and you look at the map and you, you know maybe you have a, a festival or maybe you have a gig some some big gig in some part of the United States, and you're going to try. We're going to try to build a tour around this. We're going to add some dates. We're going to go in some direction, right? And um, I can tell you, Minnesota, uh, in those conversations, is at the where the sidewalk ends for most bands, uh, you know. And they're looking at their map, and they're going to Chicago. And will we go up to Milwaukee and do a gig? Oh gosh, or maybe we'll try doing a gig there. And and then they look at this great unknown the great white north yeah. <laughs> i can tell you the, a lot of the conversations i've had over the years where people they've kind of give picked up the phone and called and not known whether not be, been very non-committal i suppose yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're just thinking to themselves there's nothing beyond here there's no way to connect there can be that sense i think you know especially for a band like malinky or some band from ireland or or the uk or and they're coming over and, and they see uh they see Chicago and they know that name. Yep. And then there's this Minnesota place that's like seven hours down the road. And, and of course, you know, like there is a long history of people coming here and, and playing at the Cedar and playing at, at other local venues or local festivals. But it were really like what's happened with the Celtic Junction is that if you're playing, uh, you know, traditional Irish music, you're playing any kind of Celtic music, um, it's really on the map as a venue that's specifically for you and, and has that audience, has that that cultural affinity for, for the music. And when you see that and you're looking at a map of the United States there with your band or, you know, going back and forth over email or however you're doing it and you're thinking, where will we go? And you know that this place has a community and has a cultural center specifically aimed at your type of music. It puts it on the map and it put, I mean, it literally puts it on your tour map that you're going to make that stop and you're going to make that seven hour drive or, depending on if you stop in Milwaukee first or whatever you do. I feel like right now, about a month after we did our outdoor concert series, I mean, it basically sold itself. Yeah. Uh, the mere mention of asking artists to perform, uh, I think it, nobody, nobody said no. And then, you know, the ticket sales, we didn't really do any promotion. We just kind of made people aware that this was happening. And we had uh, we had close to eight hundred people. That's great. Yeah, somewhere in the seven seven hundred and something people that came over over the course of the three days and over the twelve events. And uh, I suppose I kind of remembered what it was like to <laughs> to run a concert that yeah. weekend. You know, it, it was we'd never really done anything outside um, as a group, and it was a vision to to use the beautiful mural as a as a as a backdrop. And um, yeah, it made for a it made for a pretty special weekend.
it's wonderful to have a facility that is dedicated to this form of music and pretty much exclusively. You know, we get the odd. We'll take bookings and take uh, take in events of of close community, you know, friendships and partnerships. But most of what happens, you know, the majority of what happens is is in that uh, that Irish music genre. Yeah, I, just to you mentioned the the Singers Club. Just to say one thing, I, I'm just as someone that's involved in that shoestring local organization. And I know it would it would feel the same for like uh, the Great Northern Irish Pipers Club or the Irish Music and Dance Association, some of these uh, organizations around town. I mean, this this building and and the and the concert space has meant so much, just as a as a venue. It's just the go to venue for a lot of these organizations. Um, when I put on my Singers Club hat, that's uh, that's how one way I think of this place is the place where I can hold an event. <laughs> yeah, it, that's the thing. And and I think it's inspired people to actually take the plunge to host events at different times. Like I've always wanted people to feel as though this, this, this is theirs. This belongs to the community. And, and over the years, I think that's become clearer, you know, maybe at the beginning or at the outset, it was like, well, this you know, Irish guy, Cormac and his wife, Natalie, are doing this Irish Centre. Like, we were friends at the time where it started out, but a lot of people didn't know us. And I don't know if we understood what the journey was ourselves. It's been this journey of discovery. It, it's, it's been, a, there's been a lot of self-serve events. And, that, and that's something that I really have a personal passion for, that I wanted people to feel like it was their own. I would say there are hundreds of people in the community who know the keypad code to get in the door. And that's always been the the goal. It belongs to the community, and and I feel like that's the way it should be. Um, and fortunately, it's worked. Hi there, my name's Steve Byrne, and I'm a founder member of the Scots folk song band Malinky. I'm also the Scots Singer of the Year 2019. We had the distinct privilege of being the first touring band to take the stage at the Celtic Junction back in January 2010. And as well as being thoroughly impressed by Minnesota's winter weather, we were impressed by the warm welcome that we had from everybody in meeting the O'Shea's, the McBurney's and being welcomed into their homes. So we were delighted to return the following year and to do workshops with Nora Rendell and all sorts of other folk. It was a wonderful time and we still talk about it as a wonderful venue. So we hope that you can reach out today and support this fantastic community resource uh, with a donation. I still have my Celtic Junction fridge magnet somewhere in the house. I say somewhere because the small person that we live with has decided to collect all of the fridge magnets and put them somewhere else in her playroom. But uh, I'm going to give you a song now uh, for tonight's celebration. And it's a song which comes from the pen of Tommy Sands, the great Irish songwriter from the north of Ireland. It's a song about freedom and democracy, which I think is something really worth singing about in these times. So this will keep your hopes up and stay safe. This is called Your Daughters and Your Sons. They wouldn't hear your music and they pulled your paintings down They wouldn't read your writing and they banned you from the town They couldn't stop you dreaming and the victory you've won You sowed the seeds of freedom in your daughters and your sons In your daughters and your sons in your daughters and your sons You sow the seeds of freedom in your daughters and your sons Your weary smile it proudly hides the chain marks in your hands Where you bravely strive to realize the rights of everyone Though your body's bent and low, a victory of one you sow the seeds of justice in your daughters and your sons In your daughters and your sons In your daughters and your sons You sow the seeds of justice in your daughters and your sons I don't know your religion, but one day I heard you pray for a world where everyone can work and children they can play And though you never got your share of the fruits that you had won 
Sow the seeds of equality in your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons. Sow the seeds of equality in your daughters and your sons. They taunted you in Belfast, they tortured you in Spain. And in that Warsaw ghetto where they tied you up in chains. In Vietnam and Chile where they came with tanks and guns. It's there you sowed the seeds of peace in your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons. It's there you sow the seeds of peace in your daughters and your sons. And now your music's playing, I read your writings on the wall. All the beautiful dreams that you painted can now be seen by one and all. And now you've got them thinking, man, the future's just begun. You sow the seeds of freedom in your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons. You sow the seeds of freedom in your daughters and your sons. In your daughters and your sons, in your daughters and your sons, I sow the seeds of freedom in your daughters and your sons. Tommy Sons. You know, one of the things I was thinking about maybe is hearing you tell me a little bit about your vision for concerts at the Celtic Junction moving forward, you know, maybe in a post-COVID, post-pandemic. The temporary pause, you could say, in, in, in concerts has been an interesting time to reflect, uh, to reflect on what the journey has been uh, the last decade, um, almost exactly a decade. I said January 2010 was our first ticketed concert we ran. And um, March 8th, 2020 was the last one. <laughs> the last one up until last month's um, outdoor concert series. And I suppose last month really reminded me of, it, for me personally, it's a little, it's, it's almost like a drug. It's like you feel this great sense of, uh, I feel a great sense of pride when I see people show up to a show. I fell into this through my own personal interest in Irish music, my own personal journey of of playing it too, and of of growing up in it. My parents were were um, I, I think out of all three of us kids, they poured a lot of energy and resources into me um, uh, and Irish music because I was interested from a very young age. Uh, both my siblings played, but sort of let it go in their teen years, um, and then it stuck and stayed with me and they brought me to all kinds of events and concerts and they enabled a lot of things for me as we as we look forward to the future i just don't know what the landscape holds like i'm i'm a little concerned that uh the pandemic will have um i suppose it has is interrupted the momentum and the the the, the constants you know a lot of bands would just be they spend march in america or they spend you know, they always would have at least once a year, maybe once every two years, they would plan to tour the United States in some way or Canada as well. Um, and as we look forward to the future, I really hope, I really hope that there are artists that we're able to um, avail of and uh, we're able to book. Uh, yeah. Our first decade has been, it has been so, we've been so incredibly fortunate. Um, most of our bookings have come from people contacting us and not necessarily from me going after or seeking them um, unless I've known or seen that, OK, well, they're going to be in Chicago or they're going to be in uh, St. Louis or they're going to be, you know, they're going to be some some state around. And I think, OK, well, let's try and see if we can convince them to come up to the Great White North. <laughs> My vision for it as we go forward would be to be a little bit more proactive in in who we're deliberately selecting 
sure. and and to try to reach out to a specific um, type of music. And I think that there's a lot of creative ways that we we as a community can um, enhance the 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 stuff that's already happened and that pattern moving forward, but also you know enhancing it with creating more online events, you know, creating more events yeah. that then are attended online, that kind of stuff. Yeah, indeed. Like we, we together have produced a couple of online concerts and we're planning to do more um, this winter. We've invested in a little bit of um, technology to be able to do that um, and to be able to do it in a safe way as well, yeah. to be able to do it distanced and to be able to allow the artists to feel safe. Um, we're looking at doing a, a, a concert series over the winter um, where artists could invite uh, friends and family to be to be a human audience for them. So there would be a little bit of human interaction in a safe way, but the, the majority of the audience would consume the concert um, online in the safety and the comfort of their own home. And there's a lot of interesting stuff that I was thinking about too from, uh, from like the community perspective. Um, this venue is is a super high quality concert venue. And I think what ha a lot of people in the community, there's a lot of people in our um, local Irish support community, uh, whether you're Irish or not, but support the Irish arts, know of this venue and they know how high quality it is. But there's a larger uh, community that I don't think know just how incredible a concert venue this is. You know, I mean, I think it rivals the Cedar, Cult Cedar Cultural Center absolutely in the kind of sound quality and the lighting and the stage um it's not as big but that's kind of nice especially for local artists because you know speaking as a local artist myself being able to put on a concert here and even if you only bring in a hundred people it feels really rich you know it's it feels packed it feels like a real concert event and you don't have venues like that elsewhere in the cities they're really they start at about 300 seats and up and they get kind of expensive if you want to book something on an independent basis and have a event or a concert it can be really expensive and then you have to worry about insurance and there's all kinds of stuff that make it hard for small independent artists to have these kind of events but the celtic junction is a perfect place for that and not only is it great from a you know accessibility standpoint but it's such a high quality venue you know, and so when we, when the Hounds of Finn were first getting going, we, um, that was in 2007, and then when you opened in 2010, yeah. we, uh, we decided that we needed to put on a concert for a video, because we needed to have video to be able to book our band into festivals and touring and all that kind of stuff. And so we couldn't, we were trying to figure out where should we have this live concert and record it. Well, our friend Ken Onstead said, you know, check out the Celtic Junction. There's a great stage and great equipment there. And sure enough, it worked out to be an absolutely perfect venue for us to have this concert that we then turned into a live DVD. And we'll probably hopefully play some of it during this webcast. Yeah. Um, but that was in 2010. That was November of 2010. Wow. So we're coming I up on the 10 year anniversary <laughs> of that concert. And, um, but if we hadn't been able to easily contact you and uh, book the venue and be able to afford the venue at such a reasonable rates, like there's no way we would have been able to do that. And that, from uh, from the Hounds of Finn standpoint, creating that video then got us into all kinds of festivals around the country and really helped our band to grow and grow the brand. And so that was invaluable to us. And um, I think that there are more local artists on that level that could take advantage of this resource to be able to um, to bolster their image and to you know work up their popularity and so I think that's something that would would be helpful to start getting the word out um, and as hopefully as we raise some money through the fundraiser to really bolster that image we can start letting people know that this is a great place to come and host a concert and shoot your videos and maybe it's music videos you know and like the music video we shot a couple years ago I yeah. mean that worked out great. Yeah. The value that that adds to the community is just tremendous. You know, I'm also involved with the Hamlin Midway Coalition, and they put on the the holiday pop up every year. Yeah. And those kinds of events, it's it's so valuable for local organizations to be able to have a place where they can go, have a relatively small event, 
but without a whole lot of headache about how are we going to get access to the space? How are we going to fit everybody in there? How are we going to worry about this, that, the other thing? And my goal all along has been to be uh, flexible with people. You know, the, the, the rental fees of the space were really just designed to keep the space. Mm -hmm. That's literally it. And there's no profit motive involved in them. They're really, the whole idea was to, you know, community events operate on shoestring budgets and, and, and cultural events of all kinds. Sometimes they don't have any budget. Yeah. Sometimes people just say, um, we're going to book it. We hope we get people in the door and then we'll give you a share of the proceeds of the door. I mean, that's how the majority of the concerts have operated. We haven't had uh, the, the budget resources um, either in the early days of, of, of just operating the concerts, you know, myself to now where we actually have, um, you know, more board involvement and we have, there are more people who are, who are supporting the, the concept. So one thing that's really cool is that a few couple years ago, the Celtic Junction Arts Center won an award. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the Irish Central uh, hosted a vote for the best Irish American cultural and cultural center and festival award, I believe it was, and uh, through some crazy fortune and the and the the voting public, Celtic Junction Arts Center and the Owen McKiernan Library won the award, and that was in uh, what, yeah two years ago, twenty eighteen, two thousand eighteen, yeah. Yeah, once that award, I suppose, was out there or was was possible to vote for, our, our community supported us and the community voted for us and we were, we were very, very lucky. And it's been it's been a great um, it's been a great honor. And it and it's been a lovely recognition from Irish Central themselves yeah. and from the community that we were you know, that we were of value to them. Well, congratulations on that and hopefully uh, there'll be more of those in the future. Yeah, I can only hope. <laughs> It's not, the, not our motivation to do it, but it's lovely when someone says, well done. It sure is. It sure is. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I am here to encourage you to donate to the Celtic Junction Arts Center. I myself have been a happy customer of the Celtic Junction for 11 years now, attending a countless number of concerts and workshops, various sorts of events, and Cayleys, both Irish and Scottish style Cayleys. And where else in this region would we have had these extraordinary experiences and opportunities? Now, I've also enjoyed a life and a career in traditional arts. So I know what it takes to keep an art center like this running. It takes community participation in events and programming, whether live or online. It takes sharing your enthusiasm for your experiences at the Celtic Junction. And it also takes your support in the form of a donation. You can donate any time of year, but it is especially meaningful during this fall fundraiser. So I'm telling you, now is the time. With me, father, the la la la. With me, father, the la la la. With me, father, the la la la. Right, father, the la la la. Pride the diddle dee, diddle dee, skillery, idle dee. Donate to see Jack now. Thank you.
จิมปันดีบักซุนดัชยอนนัมเยลมาจุลวนกับบินควนยูรวักตะกลัวสิเจลมาจุลวนกับบินควนยูรวักตะหัวสิเจลมาจุลวนกับบินควน Folks, Todd Menton here. Uh, as a player, a musician who's worked in Irish music and other traditional music all my life, I can't tell you what a blessing it is to have a place like Sea Jack, where you can bring crazy, new, loud, fast ideas or straight up, um, straight down the line traditional ideas. Performing, uh, getting together with other musicians, sessions, instruction. Uh, you can learn about how dance and music intersect. So you can just show up at Sea Jack and read up on whatever it is you're interested in in the Owen McKiernan Library. It's a wonderful place. Central location. Um, everybody in town can show up. All are welcome. It's wonderful to have a place to play, a place to congregate, a place to learn. Celtic Junction Arts Center. Absolutely love it. The anchor's away and the gear all made fast. Oh, you ride on, and the boys give a cheer when the harbor is past. And we're bound for Ryle. It's the way, the way. Oh, you ride on. Tell anybody to be on the Celtic Junction fundraiser and uh, my name's Neil Gunn and a message from the woods it's uh, it's fall but it's uh, 21 degrees at the moment but uh, Gormick this t-shirts for you uh, the Celtic Junction where do I start I moved to Minnesota about 10 years ago and I really didn't know what the uh, what the trad music scene was uh, gonna be like uh, when I came over here and after a after about uh, nine nine months or so of, of living in Minnesota I happened upon the Celtic Junction and uh, over the last 10 years I've uh, met wonderful new friends, I've heard incredible music, I've uh, watched uh, little people go from this size and turn into big people and uh, watch them grow and flourish uh, in their music, in their dance, in their language and uh, and in their culture and it's uh, it's been fantastic. The Celtic Junction has been huge part of my life for uh, for the last 10 years. I'm going to point out at this point, it's called the Celtic Junction, not the Irish Junction, the Celtic Junction. And I always like to uh, uh, always like to mention that uh, coming from Scotland. We uh, we have uh, a monthly Cayley, which is a social dance in Scotland. And uh, there's no place I could think of having it in the Twin Cities um, other than other than the Junction. I always say it are Cayleys. Um, that the people of, of Minnesota and the surrounding areas have no idea how lucky they are to have such a phenomenal place uh, right here on their doorsteps. So 
I hope you're enjoying your evening and uh, I hope you're a little warmer than me and uh, whatever you can do to help support the Celtic Junction and help keep this amazing place going, uh, find it in your heart to do so. Stay safe, stay well. Cheers all. In my role as the Centre for Irish Music's Artistic Director of 10 years, I can attest to how, how valuable the concert series at the Celtic Junction has been for our students. Um, it's not everywhere that you have somebody like Cormac who's connected to the music community in Ireland and in other places and um, who's able to bring artists in. Um, and, and I've really seen that that connection, being able to see uh, live musicians of a high caliber perform in a small to medium venue like the Celtic Junction Arts Center. Um, it's so valuable for our students and we've had hundreds and hundreds of students over the years and we come to the concerts and we can meet and uh, listen to live music together and it's really valuable for our students who are learning Irish music at the Center for Irish Music. Um, so I would really encourage you to support this fundraiser and to support the concert series at the Celtic Junction Arts Centre. Production value is very important to me and it's something that I've, my, I was very fortunate to have a dad that was really into photography, into sound, into lighting, into anything he could turn his hand to, um, just out of his own personal interest and involvement in, 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 in events um, in his life and mostly through Irish dancing as well. The production value of what would go into those events um and i kind of got that bug and i think he laughs at me now he's like wow you've taken this a lot further yeah. than you go <laughs> way beyond what i ever what i was ever involved in but um i think that's one of the keys to the success you have there's a technical part that you have to have mm -hmm. there's you have to have an interest in producing things um and then you need to have a budget to be able to do it um, and that's that's I suppose where fundraisers like this are so important because we have aspirations and we have you know we've equipment that we bought ten years ago that's kind of maybe <laughs> needs a little help or you know the 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 medium of of concerts and and um, of entertainment is always shifting you know as you said in two thousand ten when you shot the Hounds of Finn video that was that was kind of the beginning of where video was absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were going to try and promote yourself as an artist yeah. or as a band, you really needed some video. And now it's more important than ever. Yeah. But now it's like the, it's the norm more so now. And the ex expectations of quality and of, um, uh, of production value are, are higher. Being a performing musician for many years myself, but also a consumer of concerts, you know. Um, I love being able to go to a venue where you can sit really close to the artist, but also hear everything in a real crystal clear sound and really high quality audio, because I'm also video and audiophile, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm into all that stuff. So <laughs> I like to, I like for it to be very clear and crisp. And it is, it's, it's definitely, as far as in my experience, this is one of the best concert venues from the standpoint of as a as a viewer and as an audience member, you get such a great quality. And that speaks a lot to your story about growing up and production value. But the fact that there's this, it's, it fits a niche in the community and amongst the uh, music scene too, of a place where people could be putting stuff on and they don't have to spend a crap ton of money to put it on. They don't have to be, um, uh, you know, worry too much about all the details. Like if you go and try to rent the Cedar Cultural Center or you try to rent some of these other venues in town, it can be really difficult. I've been really keen all the time since we have been operating concerts to keep the barrier of entry low. I've never wanted to impose minimums and rules that would be an impediment to someone. I just kind of explain to them, this is what's possible if this is the scale of event you want to do. And then it's it's all just a sliding scale. The more people that they can attract to the to the to the event, it definitely helps. But it doesn't mean that you either can do it or can't do it. And that's never been part of my interest. And 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 that's the way I hope to go forward. You know, it it takes a lot of trust. It takes 
patience and it just takes a lot of volunteer energy and it takes resources. It takes it takes uh, resources and finance from our community to help support what it is. As I said earlier, the concerts don't, they don't generate any money. In fact, they cost money to run, but they are one of the principal ways in which people interact with this whole space, with the whole cultural center. Um, and they're one of the main incentives for me to do all of the other parts of the work, you know, when the roof is leaking or when the, you know, when the, when the parking lot is full of someone's, you know, someone's left their mattress in the parking lot and you think, well, it all feels worth it to me when, when the lights go down and an artist comes on stage and plays. That's the real motivator for me. There aren't a lot of other venues in town that are programming Irish and Celtic cultural stuff in general. I mean, there certainly are some things, like you said, you know, some of the larger acts come through, play at the Cedar Cultural Center, yeah. sometimes, you know, some house concerts and whatnot. But I mean, one of the things that's really important about this venue is that it does celebrate that artistic culture that we have among you know, Celtic peoples, you know. Um, but it's also great because it's very open to all kinds of heritages and all kinds of different arts groups and art, uh, musicians and whatnot. So it's a great way to both celebrate our Irish and Celtic heritage, but it's also very inclusive. And I think that's one thing that ma matters a lot to me as um, a member of the neighborhood is just that it's very open um, and inclusive of, of all kinds of people. And I love that about this place. Yeah, I mean that, and that's, that's a very intentional uh, part of the whole vision for the center itself. Um, there's always been an expressed desire from myself and Natalie. I mean, sometimes even she's looked at me and gone, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, you know, this will be fine. These, the, you know, they're good people. And, you know, one of the other, uh, I suppose, little side notes has been that lots of our local, like really local people in the neighborhood have rented it for, you know, birthday parties yeah. and... Yeah. The quinceaneras and 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 I think that it works for them because again it's a relationship of trust. It's it's uh, the, the the price of rental is low, and you know usually meet them in the day and they come in and they say yes and they're they're so focused on what their family event is. Usually they're family based events, and um, they they love the fact that we're not looking for. Uh, an event insurance policy and we're not you know trying to have them be contracted or anything like that it's it's just a, it's a trust-based thing sometimes it's not worked out great but that's okay you know a mirror gets broken or a, right. a football yeah. goes flying or something like that and you work those things out you know but that's what a community center is supposed to be if we are not relevant to the people who live a block away from the building then we're not really serving the 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 the, the area that we that we reside in. Yeah. So it's a very exciting neighborhood where where the building is located and it has it has really been revived and is continuing to revive yeah. um, through the Hamlin Midway Coalition and uh, creative. the Creative Enterprise Zone. I see a lot of the industrial buildings around are part of this Midway Mile. Yeah. Have you seen that as well? They're branding a lot of the buildings in the area. So it really is an exciting time to be in the Midway. Um, and at the time where we first moved in here, I guess we didn't really know. You know, there was a lot of a lot of empty buildings. Mm -hmm. You know, Menards is the the <laughs> the landmark down the road. And but um, we've kind of put this place on the map to a certain extent. And and I really feel like we've brought a lot of people to the neighborhood. And, and I hope that that growth continues yep. over over time. Yeah, that, the flexibility of the space is really a key attribute. You know, you're talking about the different family events and whatnot that happens here. But also, we've had, like, film fundraising events here, you know, and book signings and all kinds Poetry of... readings. Yeah, and, really, really yeah. flexible. And the space is so flexible, it can be mod, uh, modulated. <laughs> is that the right word? I think people are incredible with their, their own little vision when they come in and they go, yeah, I see that being there and that's going to be there. And, and we try to have... We try never to say no. You know, if it's like, if you want to move walls, we need to have a conversation. But outside of that, if you, if it's, you know, we're, we try to keep it, you know, 
yes, you want to set up that in that room. Okay, well, that's great. And we, luckily, the the building's a little bit of a maze. <laughs> so luckily, the, a lot of the spaces connect to each other. So it, it there's good flow. There's good flow around, and and it 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 enables enables a lot. It's a ten, it's actually worked out to be really suitable. Yeah. You never would have started out with a pencil and paper and landed with right. this design. Um, well, well, the fact, too, that it is a conglomeration of organizations here as well. You know, the, the fact that you have all of these really great organizations that are tied together thematically, the Irish Fair, yeah. the Center for Irish Music, the O'Shea Irish Dance, all of that, um, these are all organizations that might otherwise have a difficult time finding a place to have an office or might, you know, not be generating enough revenue to pay rent and that but together everybody's stronger and it makes for a stronger community and the center itself is really a key part of that so yeah yeah and it, a lot of the the other or community organizations they kind of consider this to be their home even though they're yeah. maybe not a, a a tenant or or a regular um user but when they do their events they have tended now over the years to they're pretty much always here, yeah. and and that's a, that's I suppose a testament to their, um, the, the, their trust in it and the fact that it, it's able to fit their needs. You know, yeah. the things are here, the production stuff they need, the you know just down to you know one of the most frequent questions is, do you have chairs and tables? Right. Do you charge for chairs and tables? I'm like, God, yeah. no. I have been a big fan of the art center and the different organizations in here for many years and. I, I know that you are proud of it, but I just think it's absolutely something that for you and Natalie to be proud of. And, and we're the community is proud of you for having done all this great work. So I'll just say thank you from the standpoint of, you know, a neighbor and friend. So it's been awesome. Oh, I appreciate that. Ken. And I definitely think that if uh, if you can reach in there and, and give a donation, no matter how small, I think it's, it's really going to help uh, move this whole organization forward in a, in a really positive and excellent way so. yeah i mean we have some great plans uh that are formulating at the moment to both internal modifications to the space indoors and then external additions that we that we do plan we have a we have a a plan for the next kind of five to seven years and uh, there's a lot of ambition yep. um really to be able to uh respond to what has been asked of us in the community and, you know, if you're not listening to the community and listening to people's dreams and desires, and my own too, you know, I'm a yeah. bit of a dreamer. Um, this is, I suppose, the, the, the result of some of that. Um, I need a little slap of reality every so often. But, uh, but the, you know, funding really is the, is the key. We've been very fortunate. The Irish government have been uh, very generous to us over the last four years um, through the Immigrant Support Programme. Um, and uh, we've we've had tremendous support from the O'Shaughnessy Foundation, and you know those organisations have have again they've been so trusting of us, uh, and they it really those dollars make a huge difference because wow. they're they're coming in, they're coming with without a lot of um, they're not necessarily predetermined exactly what we have to spend every dollar on and that gives us the flexibility to be able to uh, respond to what is needed in the community what people bring to us and say this is what we need to make our uh, class work or to make our our concert work or to make our event um, or to to be able to provide to our community so it, it's 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 really um funding is very important so if anyone is motivated to 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 support us in this journey please do and uh we'll be we'll be here for the, we're here for the long term